What is up guys? Welcome to the vlog episode three. Three. And today we are going to talk about how to improve your photo game. Now this will work even if you're doing this on your mobile phone or your DSLR cameras. So yeah, I decided to give you guys five tips to improve your photo game. I'm actually going to do a quick photo shoot in collaboration with Chanel Bibanko. Follow him. What we're going to be doing is giving you tips and showing you some examples on how you can improve your photography game. So if you want to upload that crispy, quality, awesome photo over at Instagram, this is the right video for you. Right now I'm here at Biz Buddies. If you guys don't know where this place is, I'm going to link a description below or above on the link onto their page. This is a co-working space that you can actually have your meetings in. Uh, do your work uh, or probably just chill out. So we have fast internet here, cheap price, fully air conditioned. Recommend you guys visit this place if you want a good place to hang out. We're gonna start the video tutorial. Let's go. So tip number one from me is frame. When you frame your subjects, it is easier to guide your viewer on where to look at. That's basically the simplest way to explain that. It's a very, very common thing that most amateur photographers can overlook at. Just changing your angle and putting it on to the center or putting it in between objects could actually make it easier for your viewer to focus on your subject. Find some objects and take advantage of your location in order to improve or in order to make it easier for your viewer to look at your subjects. Tip number two, lighting. So let's make it quick and easy. For me, there are two types of light. There's harsh light or hard light and then soft light. So you can use these two types of light to compose your photo even better. So just make sure that before you take your photo, you have to check whether your lighting is good. That's really, really obvious. The more light that you have, the more cleaner your photo is going to be produced, especially in your DSLR cameras. Because if you have more light, you're going to have to shoot at less ISO. And we know if you're in a very low ISO, there's less noise on your image. Now on mobile photography, that also works as well. Shooting with a low ISO because you have more light is going to produce much cleaner image. Some of modern smartphones now are really capable of shooting at manual, so you can actually choose the lowest on the bunch, like shooting at 100 or 50 ISO. Also, light is very powerful. You can create lots of tones and mood. It's really great to experiment with natural light, especially if you're a beginner photographer. So just shoot out, go into your location, take advantage of your light, use you know, reflectors. If you don't even have reflectors, you can use normal white paper or white boards in order to reflect those lights and to fill those shadows in. Tip number three, depth of field. Now this is really great. Depth of field separates your subject to the background. It actually creates that professional portrait look. If you have a DSLR, I recommend you invest on a prime lens or a lens that has a really small aperture or a big aperture. I don't know, something that has a lower number on the aperture, like 1.8 or 2.8 or 1.2 or 1.4. If you don't have enough budget to invest on lenses, you can actually buy third-party lenses from other manufacturers. I actually have this Yumno 15mm 1.8, which is a ripoff of the Canon 15mm uh, 1.8. So this is actually really cheap on Philippine currency. I got this for like 2,500 which the original Canon lenses are around 5,000 to 6,000 pesos. So, I mean, of course the crystal on those Canons are way more different, but if you're shooting for your Instagram content or your social media content, you won't really see a big difference on this one, especially if you shoot on RAW. So I recommend you guys invest on your lens and shoot with a great shallow depth of field. And on your mobile phones also, most smartphones now have a portrait mode which helps on creating the artificial 
uh, bokeh or uh, depth of field on your photos. If you don't have a prime lens, you can actually use your zoom lens or your kit lens, which what I'm using right now is not a very special lens. It's an 18 to 55 kit lens that comes with your DSLR. You can actually just zoom it right in and then just play with your focus and you actually have a lot of depth of field. Adding depth of field to your photos improves your photography game on another level. It can either separate or attach your subject to the background. It also helps if you move your subject away from the background. So if you don't have a good lens that has a big aperture, I recommend you move your subject away from the background and then you just zoom your lens close up and then just take that photo. So the next tip is coming from our other photographer, next two tips from Channel De Banco. So let's go over there. Guys, check this out. One of the photographers is supposed to give a tip for you guys, but they're shy on the camera. So I'm giving them a quick game in order to show who is going to give the first tip. So let's see. All right, whoever loses, gives the next tip. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Here we go. Tip number four. Let's go. Okay, right now I'm here with Channel Banco. Tip number four is going to be editing based on your theme. Usually when I shoot, I already had a concept in mind. By uh, basing on the story, uh, you get the idea of what colors are you going to use, as well as how to shoot on that certain period when I use all the elements, you know, the, the lighting, the composition, like this guy already gave you the tip. It's really important to yeah. like shoot on the theme, right? Yeah. So. Because if you're going to shoot a fashion photography, you should color grade based on that theme. True. Um, you don't yeah. you don't put landscape colors on yeah. fashion it, photography. It would really look the, the concept uh, you know not in line. Or yeah. It's gonna be super awkward yeah. to have colors not related. One of the important reasons why you should shoot based on your theme <laughs> because you don't want to make things look awkward. If you're shooting on a midday and on a summer uh, location, you don't want to color grade cool colors. I mean, that would be really awkward looking at photos of mountains that has colored greens on it and then shifting that Kelvin all the way to 2000 Kelvin. So that's going to make everything look bluish while your location is in midsummer. So that's going to make it awkward. So make sure when you edit, you're going to have the color based on your theme. So yeah. tip number five is posing. Don't be shy to like engage yeah, yeah. with your models. Yeah. Don't be shy to engage with your friends. You know, in order to help create uh, or express your story on the photos, it's wise to give them posts that can express those uh, photos even better. Yeah. So if your story is, you know, like for like right now, the session is about uh, retro and you know curiosity yeah, and stuff like that. It's more of a moody kind of. Yeah. Um, he is uh, guiding our model to pose, uh, like looking at the window. That creates mystery on on the photo because you don't see where she's looking, but she is looking somewhere. Okay, so posing so, helps. Yeah. So uh, another tip, guys, uh, when posing a model, uh, always be considerate and be um, mindful of the the outfit the rear model is wearing. Yeah. If your model is wearing something like you know it can expose her skin or something private, you know parts uh, you don't want to be included in the shoot. Yeah. Uh, try to be more considerate. You know if, if she's wearing something like that, that is yeah. something that you have to uh, talk to with your model. Yeah. If you are going to do like boudoir photo shoot, mm -hmm. of course you need to uh, make sure she's okay with it. Have a contract with it. But for safety purposes, it's okay to shoot uh, with what you and your model agree at. Mm -hmm. So keep it keep it safe. You know, keep it on. Keep it with boundaries, and you know, just enjoy the shoot. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's continue to shoot. Next up, we have a bonus tip because I thought Channel and I were the ones who was going to just do this photo shoot, but we actually have Pat there. So, yeah, so it's going to give us one last one bonus tip. I said it works, it's going to give five, but you guys are lucky we're going to give about six. So let's go over there. You're next. Ooh. So this is Kat. Yeah, just got right. Link, link on her Instagram below. <laughs> hey guys, okay, so for the bonus tip uh, number six, we've got Eshino over here. Make sure to check out her on IG. And uh, all right, tip number six is different perspectives. So 
Tell us more about that. Don't shoot on these like um, eyelashes. Um, um, there are dark times. Hey. Um, always change your perspective. Don't only um, like shoot on your eyelashes. Um, you you can kneel down. You can um, climb the stairs or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Perspectives help you create your story. If you shoot on a on a higher angle, that will mostly diminish your subject. It will make it seem small. But if you're trying to like. Uh, take a photo for a poster that tries to tell a story about uh, strength or, or maybe you're on a photo shoot that is focused more on fitness. Sometimes you must, you know, shoot in a lower angle in order to uh, portray that your character or your subject is bigger or stronger. Perspective also helps out when you shoot a short person, you know. That helps me a lot. That helps us a lot because they're, we're short people and when you try to take photos of short people, I usually take photos on the hip level. So that helps. If normal people would take photos of you on the eye level, sometimes it will make uh, you seem more even smaller. So we're just going to show you examples of how those work if you're a short person or you're a tall person. So yeah, God, thanks again for that tip. Let's continue the photo sheet. Let's go. <laughs> so that was it you guys. I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. It's a little bit overexposed over here. Let me go to your left. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Quick tips, six actually tips for you to improve your photography. So if you have photos that you applied the tips that we just provided, uh, please send them on my Instagram or here on this Facebook account. I would like to check those photos. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, till the next vlog, episode four coming up probably next week because I just shot three vlogs for the week. And that's just insane. And, I've, and I still got a lot of work to do. This vlogging thing is really taking up my time. So, but it's worth it because you guys are checking me out. Also, thank you for Patricia for also doing this thing for free, for biz buddies, for providing quality service. So, till the next vlog, I'll see you in the next one.